So we'll start with Ben. Uh, you know, what starts as a story of like a fractured family quickly escalates into a terrifying otherworldly story. What inspired you to mix this specific theme with that fantastical side? Um, I mean, it's always kind of difficult kind of talking about inspiration and how you arrive at something because you're not, I mean, I'm certainly, I think a lot of, um, you know, kind of writers and, and whatnot, aren't, you're not really consciously trying to mix these, mix things together. It's just kind of how the story begins. So the origins of Matriarch were in a short film that I made for Hulu, for Huluween, if you, uh, I think they're the first Huluween and the short film called Earn. And it's about a mother and a daughter, although the mother's already dead by the time the film uh, begins. It's, it's the daughter trying to scatter her mum's ashes. And then we realise that the, the daughter's actually basically has murdered her her mother. So and then there's been a kind of toxic relationship um, kind of prior to that. And so that was when uh, Hulu asked me to, to, to kind of see if I could get a feature out of it. The the only things that were kind of set in stone were really that there was going to be this this kind of toxic relationship, mother-daughter relationship at the heart of it. And then it just kind of, you know, as these things do, just took on a life of its own and just, it, you know, think other thought ideas that I had kind of um, swirling around my head at the time and, and just various other things. So, yeah, kind of started from that short and then just kind of, grabbed onto other things that were kind of in my in my head. For sure. And uh, Kate, so your character jumps from, you know, seemingly polite and pleasant to being very menacing very quickly. Uh, so how difficult was it to balance those two sides? Um, yeah, you have to be careful because you're walking a fine line with characters like Celia who are extreme and display extreme behaviours and and have behaviours that are actually quite funny as well as very dark. So it was just a matter of being a, a fine balancing act. And that's where it's really important. You have a really good relationship with your director as well and trust that their overview, like I would check with Ben sometimes, is this too much or is this enough for, you know, because you need that overview. So you don't become just like a pantomime character. So you have depth and layers and things so yeah it was it was quite a fine balancing act for Celia actually and a really interesting journey to go on with her yeah I imagine for sure and uh you know Jemima the relationship between uh Laura and Celia is central to the film so how did the two of you kind of work towards nailing that antagonistic chemistry of their family but they're not on good terms and yeah um do, do you it sounds sort of weird. We didn't really have to work at it. And it wasn't because we didn't get on. We got on mm. like a house on fire very, very quickly. Um, but I think because uh, we were both drawn to the project because of that relationship and, um, you know, these two really meaty female roles, which do doesn't, you know, happen. I, I don't come across them that often. Um, yeah. And that's exciting. And you know, anything that you can get your teeth into, but anything that is layered and, and this sort of amazing, horrible history between them. Um, and then the the sort of the, the, the weirdness, the subtle weirdness, the overt weirdness between them, um, all of it is just sort of great meat. And, um, and that's really fun to sort of discover. And we were working, you know, uh, you know, with not a lot of time, not as much money as you would want, and you just kind of get on with it. But in mm. those circumstances, sometimes come the best decisions because you're trying something off the cuff or you're playing a little bit more than you would. Sometimes if you have too much time, uh, you can have too much thinking time and that can yeah. labour your choices. Um, whereas it was sort of fly by the seat of your pants and... Yeah. Um, and that's really fun and really exciting. And we just had a lot of giggles and a lot of cuddles. And <laughs> um, yeah, just did it. Yeah, we awesome. did. it's true. I mean, actually, you know, to that point of, of, of how well these guys kind of, um, their rapport, not just kind of like both sort of personally, um, and, but also like, you know, in terms of, of, of kind of nailing scenes together. I mean, we were trying to do a, an awful lot in, in, you know, probably not enough time. And uh, I, you know, we would literally get scenes um, uh, uh, um, or kind of, you know, in a couple of takes, you know, we, we, we kind of have it. And I think there's, there's one um, shot in particular, which is uh, it's um, just after Laura has kind of stormed out and then come back into the house and, they, and Laura and Celia are talking at the foot of the stairs and it's kind of shot through from the kitchen, kind of through a doorway. Um, and had I had more time, I probably would have done something else. But it was, I was literally like, 
I, we're just going to have to get this in one shot. And just we mm. just did that and literally maybe did it twice just to, to be safe. Yeah. Um, but it was done and it was done and it was brilliant. And then we could just kind of move on. So I think had these guys not um, gotten along so well, mm. they'd been in a very different position, I think. Yeah. 